Well, autofocus happens all in there, doesn't it? I mean, we look through the viewfinder and we get all these things. So let's go inside and have a look. And that way I can show you what it's all about. <laughs> I'm just got to <laughs> just get my leg over and say, say oh, that's one. Great. <laughs> and that's the other one we made it. <laughs> it's a bit dark in here. So if we go over and we'll have a look, get the light on. Just one thing I forgot. Um, new website. Go and have a look. Learnshots.com. There it is down there. One word. Learnshots. You can upload photographs. Um, you can uh, critique photographs. Other people can critique yours. It's a brand new site. So get on there. Join up. It's free. And I'll be talking to you on there as well. Now I'll show you what you see when you're on fully automatic. The camera's on fully automatic, therefore fully automatic focus. Nothing you do, can do, the camera decides. Now this is what you see. I've enlarged it, if you like. I've drawn it in heavier pencil so you can actually see it. I'll take that off in a second when I start filming through the viewfinder. I'll get out of the way, then I'll explain to you. Now I'll take the lens cap off. And have a look. Now I've set up a very difficult still life. Now this type of set is very difficult for the camera to focus on. It's really probably the worst type of thing I could use but it does demonstrate the problems of all the focus modes. Right through the viewfinder. Now we get rid of my right of my red line. Now what you'll see here is if I press the button halfway down we get four squares. Now, did those four squares focus on the leaves? Yes, they did, and this is what it gives. And of course, that's not what we want. So what it's doing is focusing on the thing nearest to the camera, so which avoids you being able to put a nice frame around your subject and shoot through branches, etc., etc. It just won't let you do it. But if we pan up a little bit, and we get some nice squares light up on the face. So that's definitely the face, but it's not the eye, it's the face. But look at my composition. I've lost that, well, what should be a very nice frame under the face. Now that shows the major problem of autofocus with the camera on automatic. You've got no control. The camera decides where it's going to focus. And in fact, you've got to change your composition to make it focus in the place you want to be sharp. So it stops you being creative. Now that's a big problem because we want to go further with our photography. So the important thing is to get onto programs because then you can choose your focus points and this is what it's all about. This is by far the this most logical solution, and that's to choose one focus point. And I'll tell you why it's logical later. Just choose one of any of those. You hear that cameras have got 96, 124, or 16. I've forgotten how many this one's got. Let's have a look. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now, I can choose any of those 19. And I can choose it very quickly by moving one dial and pressing one button. So, but I won't show you how to do it because every camera has got different buttons and different uh, ways of doing it. So you're going to have to read your instruction book. As I always advise people to do, I'm still reading my 300 page one. <clears throat> now don't forget, these squares can be used, the single square can be used on any program other than automatic. So, that's the thing to do, get on to priority modes or the P, the yeah, auto, semi-automatic, anything you like except automatic. Now, if you've got someone on always on the right hand side, you've got a model and she's always on the right hand side of the image, you can choose the square on the right. Makes, log makes it logical. If not, you can recompose the image. I'll show you what that is in a second and it basically it's focused on the subject, recompose, so the focus stays in focus as if it was on the subject. It's a very good system. I'll show you how it works. 
Now in this case, I've chosen a center point, as you see there. Then I move that center point onto the point that I want, the part of the image that I want absolutely sharp, which in my case is the eye. I move it onto the eye, I press the button down halfway, it picks up the focus, and then I come back with my finger still on, on the button, compose the image, and then press it all the way down. Now, you'll have to bear with me on this because I've got a video camera strapped to my camera, so it's all a bit bumpy and very difficult to do. Well, here's the result. We're going a bit closer. Well, it's about as sharp as you'll get on a video, I'd have thought. But beware, if you take that finger off the button and push it back on, you might get this. Now, of course, there is a third way. And that we can choose groups of focus points. And that's very useful as well. It just depends which ones you prefer. I prefer the single point, but other people prefer the groups. I've heard people ask for all 96. How do they light up all 96 focus points? But you've seen that. There's no point. It's just like being on automatic. Don't forget, automatic will decide for itself. And normally it will focus itself on the nearest thing to the camera. Let's have a look at the groups. Well, we can switch over to choosing groups by pressing a second button that switches over to groups. So, pull four on the right, four on the left, four on the bottom, four on the top, or nine in the middle on this particular camera. Now, you see, you don't need more than that. If you go up to 94, I really can't see the point. Let's imagine I'm doing a fashion shoot where I know that when it's reproduced I'm going to have text on the left hand side of the image so the girl's always going to be on the right. I would then of course use the four focus points on the right hand side. And vice versa of course, this, is, this one is on the left hand side or would be on the left hand side to avoid the dog being the most important part of the image. Although I'd prefer to use the single point that I'd select the one that covered her face. But that's only me, that's my way of working. Well, that should have given you a good idea about uh, focus points. Now, there's a lot more to cover. It's the way the camera's set up with follow focus, etc, etc. So, I'll do another lesson soon on that. Now, a bit of homework for you. Subscribe. And don't forget about LearnShots.com. I'll be there and I can critique your photographs on LearnShots if you want me to. So join up and see you soon. You turn the lights off. Come on, help me out. Somebody help me. Please. Somebody help.